it is time to do an octopus giyutaku. And we're basically gonna make a really cool print with this octopus. It is known as the California two spot octopus. And whenever I saw images of people doing giyutakus with these, it's always so mesmerizing seeing the tentacles and the detail on the little suckers that are on the bottom of the tentacles. It comes out as such a cool print and just the fact that I get to do that now and share it with you guys gets me really excited. I put it in a bowl and I put a towel in the bowl to suck up a bit of excess moisture the night before. And this is gonna be my first time doing this, so hopefully that works out, but I have notice that it is a little slimy to the touch. I don't know if that's gonna help, it might not, but I did take off as much liquid as possible with that towel. So we'll see if it works out, but it'll allow me to position this octopus however I want. The next step is to put it out exactly the position that I want, and then the next step will be the inking. Normally with fish, I'll dry that fish out and lay it on my surface and I'll put backing like foam strips or I'll take a pool noodle and I'll slice the pool noodle just thick enough to hold the fins exactly the way that I want. And I'll use super glue to super glue down those fins. But with octopus, I don't think I'm gonna need to do that. I think the tentacles lay down flat very well. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna do a few different positions and talk about those positions. I'm at least gonna do two different ones, maybe three or four. This is the smaller one that I got. Oh, it has two tentacles missing. I noticed that some of these suckers are closed, so if I pinch them, they open up again. It's like when the animal passes away, it kind of clinches down, but I want them nice and open for the print. One of the positions I want to do is I want to put one in the corner, like in the in the corner of the frame, as if it was in a little aquarium. And I wanted it perfectly in a 90 degree angle, kind of on the edge of the frame. I think that would look really cool. Maybe two tentacles just sticking out. All right, I'm happy with that. I think it'll look cool. Another thing I want to do is test to see if it'll fit in the frame that I'm going to put it in. There you go, that would fit. Yeah, I think barely, it'll barely fit in the frame. Might have to adjust it a little bit. I think I'm ready. Next step is to cut a few pieces of paper that I'm gonna use. And what I'll do is I take the frame that I want it to fit in and cut it roughly the same size. That's the cool thing about octopus is <laughs> you can change its shape just like in the wild to fit any space. Fun fact, octopus, they can fit into any space that their eyeball and beak can fit through. Definitely gonna do multiple prints. So what I have here is Sumi Ink. I actually found it on Amazon, I'll leave a link below, but it is non-toxic and whatever you do a print on, you can wash it off and still eat the fish or in this case, octopus. This octopus is gonna make a great ceviche de pulpo. Since I'll do a few prints, that'll be enough. I 
think we're ready. Oh, this is gonna be a challenge. The octopus just wants to stick to the paper. Oh, cool. Oh, sick. All right, for the next one, I wanna do that position where it's in the corner of the frame, but I'm gonna use the big octopus for that. When you look at the frame, I wanna be able to like feel like the octopus is actually in the frame. In order to accomplish that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the actual frame and steal that 90 degree angle. So now I got my 90 degree angle and we'll take our volunteer have its tentacles kind of up alongside. Again, we're gonna pop open those suckers. Show you guys how I'm doing that. Let's just give it a little pinch and they open up just like that. But it's definitely a rare treat. We don't get a lot of these. When we do, we usually get them in tide pools when it's a negative tide, just like when we caught this guy. This was the last one of the day that I found. We were walking back to hit one more spot before we were done pocket fishing. And I look down and I can see this guy's suckers inside a hole. So I stuck my camera down there and uh, I realized it's definitely an octopus. So I reached in and grabbed him. The first one that we found, I actually, I was looking for a uh, an octopus to print the whole time actually and I'm glad uh, the mission was accomplished. But the first one we saw was the biggest one, but I grabbed it only by the mantle and I didn't grab it by the base of the arms. So as it was holding onto the rock, I actually ripped off the mantle and I felt really bad. Not only because I wouldn't be able to print that one, but <laughs> Just because it's pretty savage. It's really, it's a lot different than catching a fish on a hook. It's like noodling, like you're, you're up close and personal. You're like literally grabbing the animal while it's fighting for its life. And it's a smart animal. These octopus are really smart. So you really can't help but feel kind of bad that you're pulling this thing out of its home in such a violent way. So I have kind of mixed emotions, but I think at the end of the day, it makes me appreciate the species that much more just because they're so smart and you can just really tell that these creatures really wanted to get back in their hole and they start wrapping around your arm with these really strong tentacles and uh, you really start to gain a huge respect uh, for the animal when you harvest them this way. So I, I definitely appreciate you know, the ability to get out there on a low tide and find them in their natural environment. Kind of have to peel the octopus off the paper. That is satisfying. There it is. Now I will do one more. I'm gonna go ahead and do the one that I ripped the mantle off of, but I'm gonna do just the pure underside of that octopus. I really like how those tentacles come out and it just makes for such an interesting print because of all the details that you can get. I'm gonna try to give you a good view. You can see that a lot of the suckers are actually closed up like in this position. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch them so that they open up. Literally all you have to do is, is here's this tentac this sucker right here, just pinch it and it opens up. So I have to do that with each one so that they open up nicely for me. It is about this time that I am realizing that fish are a lot easier to print than octopus. Because every time you make a print, you have to reposition it. Unlike your fish, your fish stay still and then the paper peels off a lot easier than on an octopus because the octopus comes up every time you pull the paper off. It gets stuck to the paper and now you have to reposition it. So yeah, I'm definitely learning a lot with this. If you guys are watching this and you guys were searching how to do a gyutaku or fish print on an octopus, hopefully this helps you out and 
just so far the methods the brush is working okay i wonder if like maybe a sponge would work just as good if not better and doing it on a towel that you're not really worried about is really helpful also and it seems to give or lend itself to a better cleaner product because if you do get a little bit of ink on the towel the ink dries so fast that it's not going to transfer onto your paper and actually the nice thing about the octopus is the ink tends to stay wet a little bit longer also on the octopus so you do have a little bit more time when it comes to applying paint and then making sure that you can bring your paper over and make your print oh that's cool those suckers are amazing that's cool so cool all right guys here are the final products let's start with the first one that i printed this is the first one really excited about how this one came out it's pretty much a centered full body and i'm pretty excited about painting in the eyes so what's left to do is paint in the eyes add my stamp uh, and cut the exact por proportions for the frame that i will be putting it on but uh, i'm really loving the details on the suckers themselves the ink really picked up some really great detail uh, on that painting and what's really cool about it is it's unique because this actual octopus was missing two tentacles or got two of the tentacles eaten off by some creature probably a, a lingcod or maybe even a, a shark might have grabbed one of the tentacles but even the details around the head came out really nice the texture of the skin came through overall very satisfied with how this one came out and then the next one i did again i made this one a bit extra long so that i can crop it down but i think that one came out pretty cool as if it's going into the corner i'm probably gonna cut it to exactly where it is right in the very bottom of the frame that's how it came out pretty stoked about that pretty big octopus and then the biggest octopus the one where the mantle came off i just wanted to really get a lot of the suction cups on there but yeah look how big this thing is it's pretty massive <laughs> when it's all spread out like that but it's again crazy to think that an animal this big can fit through tiny openings within rocks as long as it's a space that the beak and the eyeball can go through the whole body can go through which is just amazing amazing but the details the details came out very very nicely each one of the suction cups has its own little pattern there's still a lot to do but i'm gonna leave it at that for this episode but i'm thinking of doing some coloring and some basic finishes to make this a final piece. If you guys wanna see the final piece, definitely uh, stay tuned on Instagram. That's where I'm posting a lot of these projects that I'm working on. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.